reap what you sow. Sounds like really good gardening advice that were attributed to Jesus Christ in the New Testament. But I think it's a, an invitation to get really serious about the way we think, about um, seeing our thoughts, our beliefs as kind of a pack of seeds. And we get to choose what we're going to sow in the fertile ground of our mind, of our consciousness, and expect that what we receive is going to match the kind of seeds we put in. So we just did, we just uh, built this incredible garden bed and planted the seeds that we chose that we would like to see grow over the course of, you know, the, the next season, over the, the rest of spring and summer. We planted tomatoes and, uh, well, actually we started the tomatoes inside as following the instructions on the package, but we planted beets and carrots and parsley. And if in the place where we planted parsley, a, a strawberry bush comes up, that will be very surprising because the whole idea is what you plant, what you sow is what you reap. Now it can happen that the wind will blow in a strawberry seed from another bed. And that's when we get to actually this intentional gardening technique in the mind of weeding, of, of being really selective about what we let continue to grow in our minds. I know that one of the ways I discover whether a, a seedling or a full-grown plant in my mind is one I want to continue to grow is, is resistance, this concept of an experience or a, an inner feeling, an emotion that tells me whether or not whether or not my perspective is true to the vision I see of myself. So when I'm faced with a fear, a doubt, a um, disappointment, I have the opportunity to look at that as a thought weed, as a belief weed, and say, okay, you know, you're not serving me anymore. And so I'm not going to let you stay in my garden and choke out the plants, choke out the beliefs that I want to grow and, flir and flourish. So one thing I discovered, my mother-in-law showed me that dandelions, they, you know, they're awesome plants and, and generally I'd let them grow, but they have these crazy long, long roots. And I know it's common practice for some folks to want to get to like, you know, do like regression therapy and get all the way to the source, to the root, the thing that happened to you when you were two years old that that um, you know caused all of this additional turmoil and I'm not recommending it or not recommending it. What works for me doesn't require that. It requires me to look at the belief as it stands now to, to say, okay, I see that as an example, I am, I am in a state of fear and confusion because I believe that these people are judging me. And looking plainly at that and feeling the deep, the sadness, right? The, the sorrow that goes along with the fear and the concern that people might be judging me allows me to recognize what I don't want. I don't want people to judge me, you know? But looking at that and engaging with that fear, that weed thought, gives me the information I need about myself to make a choice. Do I want to continue to focus there on that concern? Or do I want to do a complete 180 and put the light in front of me as opposed to facing the shadow, face the light of what I do want? I do want, first of all, not to be a person who judges other people. I know that, that being judged hurts. And so I can choose already in this moment right now to not judge the people I think are judging me and not to judge others. So I've already won the battle right there in changing my mind. But then I can also go a step farther. And I'm, I've been listening to and learning and continuing to internalize ideas of fourth dimensional thinking, which I am interpreting as imaginal thinking, as choosing a reality 
uh, to, to, to make our own real reality by imagining it as being so and assuming it is that which we choose in our imagination is so. And so the idea there is to plant a thought seed uh, of what I do choose. I choose to be in relationships with people who don't judge me. I choose to be in relationships with people who accept me as I am, who love me as I am. And I choose to be a person who models that behavior to others so that I can get what I want in the world by being it. So it's an ongoing practice, right? The garden is always, uh, always fertile, no matter what we're planting, whether it's thought seeds of things that we desire or thought seeds of things that we fear, experiences that we fear or desire, they're always growing. And so it's always beneficial to visit our gardens and to be aware of what's growing in our lives and of what we are planting. One of the ways that I stay vigilant about what's growing is listening to self-talk, listening to what I say to others. I just saw this post on Facebook that says, whatever the last six emojis <laughs> that you send to someone else are, they show you where your consciousness is. And at first I was like, eh, cause I don't really use emojis that much. But it's kind of true. If if the think about this, if the last six emojis that you sent are crying face, oh, you know, freaked out face, or um, you know, sick face, everything's going to Hades in a handbasket face, then that probably is what your experience is. But not because it's true, not because the reality is that, but because that's your perception. That's your self-talk. That's the belief seed that you're continuing to water and to, to fertilize and to let have the most sunlight. But if the emojis that we're sharing with one another, our smile emojis, our, our um, open arms, hug emojis, our okay, I'll try again emoji. I don't know what that emoji would look like. But the point is, what do you want? What do you want to be harvesting? Because that's got to be what we're planting. So I'm going to ask now, as, as you're engaging with me, what are you planting? What do you see coming to fruition in your life? And what do you want to be harvesting? You know, like what is like your top one, two, or three experiences realities that you want to see grow and flourish in your life experience or maybe in our collective life experience because that counts too i think we start with ourselves as a microcosm of what we want to experience in the world so thank you so much for listening thank you for sharing your experience with reaping and sowing in the comments below and if you enjoy talking with me this way if you enjoyed the music that i've been sharing please do subscribe to the channel please do click the notification button so you can find out the next time i'll be sharing and and uh let your friends know you know share the channel with someone who would also enjoy uh thinking and singing about these things with me i appreciate you and i'll see you soon